Hi, welcome to another conversation um, that is created under the umbrella of the SAGE Forum. Today, I will be speaking with SAGE Forum contributor, writer, editor, mother, friend, and sister in Christ, Afton Rorvik. And I am really looking forward to the stuff that we're going to be talking about today because it touches both of our lives. And I think the topic will also touch um, the experience of a good percentage of the people who um, may be listening to this. A lot of us relocate in the second half of our lives. The stats are that 9.8% of Americans move annually. Um, and more than 3 million of us move interstate every year in the U.S. And both Afton and I have relocated in recent years. And so we're going to be talking about kind of some of the surprises, the challenges, um, the discoveries um, that go along with making a big move. Both of us have moved um, from state to state. We both started in Illinois at the beginning of this leg of the journey. Afton ended up in Colorado. I am in Florida. And just as a word of introduction, Afton has written for most of her life. And um, she has two books about friendship that really are, are essential conversation starters for any of us that are trying to make sense of the relationships in our life and do those relationships well and faithfully. Um, her first book on the topic of friendship was called Storm Sisters, Friends for All Seasons. And then she drilled down a little deeper into the topic with her book called Living Connected, An Introvert's Guide to Friendship, which, spoiler alert, is not just for introverts, um, but it helps us understand whether we're extroverted, which most people say, yes, Michelle, you are extroverted. Um, I'm, I'm Michelle Van Loon, by the way, I didn't introduce myself, or whether you um, gain your energy from kind of going off and being alone and recalibrating before you go back into relationships, which is a good working definition of an introvert. So thank you, my friend, for hanging out for a little while this morning. I'm so glad that we're able to have this conversation. Oh, so, I am too, Michelle. Thank you. So let's jump in. You recently moved mm. a thousand miles from the suburbs of Chicago to Colorado after living in the Chicago area for 40 years, although you didn't start in Chicago. Um, but when you spend four decades somewhere, you know, it's kind of a habit, you know, and a familiar yeah. place. So yeah. why don't you tell us a little bit about why you guys made the move and kind of what the thought process was that led you to pull up those roots and replant them in a new place. Yeah, yeah, it, it was a, a dramatic move when you've lived somewhere for 40 years. I went to college in Wheaton, and then I lived within like a three mile radius of the college for 40 years. <laughs> so I really knew that neighborhood, that area. I had friends that I had met in college that were still there. Mm -hmm. um, so my husband was retiring, and we started this conversation probably five years before he started to think about retiring. Like, should we stay? Um, and I remember talking to people about it and praying about it saying, I don't want to move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why would I want to move? And I had friends say, Why would you want to move? I mean, look around. What you have is good. You have, you know, a house that you rehabbed, a garden that you planted. You have a friend across the street. You walk your dog with her every morning. Um, you know, there was so much good there. And so I started really wrestling with God about a lot of it, you know, and I realized that I was saying, I can't do this. I can't move. And mm -hmm. I won't move <laughs> if I'm yeah. really honest, you know, like, yeah, 
not doing that, not going there. Yeah. This is good, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but then um, I read this quotation from a Chicago Tribune writer. She was giving a graduation address and she said to these college grads, do one thing every day that challenges you, that scares you. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I wasn't doing that. I mean, I was sort of gathering around me the familiar and I was in this I was in a rut. I mean, it was a happy rut. It was a great rut, but it really was, you know, doing the same thing, going the same places. And as my husband and I talked this through, we realized that we wanted to give God the opportunity to step into our lives in a different way mm -hmm. and to um, open our hands and open our hearts. And instead of saying, I can't and I won't, Mm -hmm. I can and I will if you'll help me <laughs> if you'll go before me um yeah so we really blew our lives up and um it, I could tell you so many stories about how God went before us and made it very clear that this was something he wanted us to do but it really was a journey to get there um yeah, <laughs> it is. It is a journey. Well, here's the thing that occurred to me. We moved four years ago, right before the start of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, because especially the first couple of years, um, I've got a lot of health conditions that required me to be um, super, super vigilant and careful. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of still feel like I'm a new person in this community, even though we've been here for four years. Yeah. But this is what occurred to me about moving at this stage of our lives. When we're younger, we tend to move either for a job yes. or a ministry opportunity, yeah. or um, there's there's family needs that may call us to a particular place. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more clarity mm -hmm. when it comes to moving when you're 35 and you've got a, a young family and a career that you're focusing on. One of one or both partners in a in a relationship if the person's married, um, you know it it just changes things. This is not that. <laughs> No, it's not. And in some ways, the the wideness of the choices that go along with this, like we could move yeah. anywhere. Our need for move, our, our desire to move, I don't even know if it was a desire. I hated the Chicago weather. I too am from the Chicago area. I I was born and raised there and spent most of my my life there, um, except for nine years in Milwaukee. So it's still the same basic climate, but um, ours was a financial mm -hmm. kind of reason. We really couldn't afford to stay in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and so that also changed how we approached looking for a new place to go, mm -hmm. a new place to live. Mm -hmm. What led you to where you are when you've got the whole <laughs> country and or world in front before you? You know, there's, I, I have friends that are like, well, I could live in California or I could live in Maine or I could live in Tennessee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And yeah. it's almost so many choices. It is hard, but what, how did you yeah. guys narrow your focus? When yeah, you it, it really was a journey. Um, and we were all over the map, literally. Um, we um, started, like I said, about five years before we knew we were going to make some mm -hmm. sort of change. and. We um, ended up, <laughs> we got a free trip down to Tennessee to this retirement community. You know, it was homes 55 and over. And mm -hmm. so we went down there and really loved it and mm -hmm. went back a couple of times. And I mean, we really thought we're moving to Tennessee. You know? I love Tennessee. I'm with you. I am we with you. <laughs> we did too. And it was kind of, you know, in the Cumberland Mountains, it was beautiful. Um, but we have this philosophy that when we make big life-changing decisions, we pull in a team of advisors mm -hmm. and they are trusted friends, family members whose advice we really admire. And we talk to our kids and um, several of those people, including our daughters said, uh, you realize if you go to Tennessee, you're going to be nine hours from anybody that you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's like, oh yeah, 
uh, I mean, we knew that, but we were just got caught up in this, you know. Mm -hmm. So then we just started rethinking, okay, what are the priorities? Can we find a way to be closer to family? Mm -hmm. And realized that that really was our goal. You know, we, we did have options and we did have family members that would talk to us <laughs> and um, wanted to hang out with us. And 12 of them are in Colorado. So right. you know, we just started looking at sheer numbers and, you know, we knew this place because I grew up here. We mm -hmm. thought, oh. yeah, let's, let's really pursue mm -hmm. <laughs> Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, but the interesting part of all that is that I did not want to live close to where I grew up. Mm -hmm. um, I had some really hard memories of living here. And I said to my husband, those words again, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I won't do it. <laughs> More of that. Yeah, I'm holding my arms. Yep. Yep. More of that. Mm -hmm. And so God had to really work in my heart and he did it through several trips out here to look at options. And he reminded me that along with those really hard memories, there were some wonderful people here who are mm -hmm. now in their eighties who still live here. And these were people that really helped me grow in my faith and encouraged me when I was an awkward teenager trying to figure out who I was and living in a difficult situation. And um, it was really that moment where I realized, okay, God has a lot of good here in Colorado. He had it then, I couldn't see it, but mm -hmm. he has it here. And so, you know, now I live 25 minutes from where I grew up and I think almost every day, I thank God for bringing me back here and showing mm -hmm. me his hand in my life. Mm -hmm. that, and that has been such a surprise. I just did not expect that. That's, that's an amazing story. But I think it's encouraging to hear this is a process. Oh, huge. This mm -hmm. is a process. We used to have in front of um, our our house, we used to live in Crystal Lake, um, yeah. which is a suburb northwest of Chicago. We've lived a lot of places. This is our 13th move. So I was not uprooting 40 years of being in the same place. I was used to kind of I, as much as you can get used to uprooting, but it was always in the same basic soil of the uh -huh. Midwest. Uh -huh. um, but I had the ex a, a, a big, horrible crab apple tree. They're very pretty, but it was planted literally in front of the front door of this aging 1960s house. Uh -huh. And it was my stated goal during the time that we lived there to dig, cut the tree down. My <laughs> husband did that. And then I was going to dig out all the roots and then replant because there, there were just a ton of roots and they were pushing on concrete. And the process, it took me months of my young kids' nap time to <laughs> dig, those, <laughs> dig those roots up. The day that I finally got the shovel under the bottom of all the roots and started to feel it rock and move, I went, I, I feel like there's a life lesson here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Besides, don't plant a giant tree right in front of your front door. <laughs> It's going to vomit fruit all over your sidewalk and trek into your house. That, that was a pretty easy lesson. But that process is really something that the uprooting, um, whether it's roots that aren't that deep or whether it's, you know, mature roots in a lifetime place. Um, it is. It I is. know. It, and for you, you're an introvert. So... <laughs> That also adds a different kind of um, processing yeah. because when you are the new person, yeah, um, you you have some choices. Of course, you can just retire into your shell and then <laughs> feel very um, disoriented because moving is disoriented. But also, like, how do I even start? I left behind the people who know all my stuff. Yes, so. so yeah. Did you navigate that? Did yeah. the familiarity of the the place you landed was that helpful, or you know, 
what can you share about that part of your story? Yeah, yeah, I, I would say maybe that was one of the hardest parts of moving is that I am an introvert. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy by myself. Um, one of the things I struggle with the most is walking into a room full of people I don't know. And when you move, the only way to really get to know people is to walk into a room, you know? Right. Um, so, and my husband and I really believe in the body of Christ. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's flawed, we're flawed, um, you yeah. know, but we still believe that it's important. So we had spent about a year before we moved watching a church online. Mm -hmm. And then the weekend we moved here, we moved in on a Friday, Sunday, we went to church and we just dove in and we mm -hmm. committed ourselves to walking into that room on Sunday and mm -hmm. to being in small groups. And my husband is an extrovert and one of his joys is to work a room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he loves to go I in. I know how that is. Yes, indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I appreciate it. I love watching the magic at work, you know? Uh, but yeah, I don't know if it's magic in my case. <laughs> it might just be socially awkward and loud, but um, good, good. I mean, it's, it helps to have somebody kind of cut a path for you. Yes, it does. But I also realized I have to own it myself. You know, mm -hmm. I have yeah. to make that decision. So, you know, I need to walk into a women's Bible study, you know, um, but we had met these friends at church the second Sunday, and they were so wonderful about pulling us in and inviting us. That was such a help. Um, but I also realized I had to do a couple things as an introvert. You know, I had to walk into a room with some questions in my head mm -hmm. and some notion as to, okay, if I connect with one person, that's a victory. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to know the whole room. Um, I also realized I needed quiet before and after these events. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if we were going to a group dinner, I would take a walk by myself ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then when we got home, I would debrief and go over it in my head and kind of let it go. And, you know, that may seem silly to a lot of people, but that that's really how they're introverts. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe not to some extroverts. It's, I, I think, hard. Um, it's hard. even though I'm an extrovert, I um, found it wearying yes. to have to start over to yes. have to figure out what part of my story to tell to a new person yes. to try to assess, you know, who they were like, it's, it's exhausting when everyone's new and there's not just your little posse of buddies that you might go have coffee with or wine to, or t walk your dog with. Yes, so, um, yes exactly. And I, I really had to keep track of that emotional mm -hmm. um, energy because for an introvert, I don't have as much as maybe an extrovert does, you know? So I had to imagine like, you know, the car has the regulator for the gas and you yeah. get the orange indicator that blinks. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to pay attention when I'm in a setting, okay, is my emotional indicator blinking? You know, am I on overload? Okay, I need to go fuel up with some yeah. quiet. Um, so I, I can the gift of being older and doing some of that work to kind of understand this is how God made me. Yes. It's not a mistake. This isn't a sin. This isn't a flaw. This is, this yeah. is um, a feature, not a flaw as, yeah. as people say. Um, mm. for me, I, I would say because of the pandemic church was only online um, I led a Bible study. I had connected with a congregation. We're not attending there anymore, but I, I had connected initially. My husband and I um, attended for a few months. Then the pandemic came and I co-led a Bible study for a group of older women via mm -hmm. Zoom for two years um, through that church. And um, it was it was something, you know, it wasn't like a real you know, embodied human relationship, but it was a way to get to know people and let them get to know me a little bit. Um, the other thing that someone recommended to me during that time was to view my neighborhood as yeah. my small group. Yeah. 
Um, and that like I was used to going to church and doing a small group or doing a women's Bible study or whatever. And the relationships flow because um, you're connecting around spiritual things often. Mm -hmm. But I, that piece of counsel, which I think was a throwaway from the person I was talking to, mm -hmm. actually helped me listen more deeply mm -hmm. to the conversations I was having and by golly, mm -hmm. the, uh, I, I live in an over 55 community. Yeah. And um, so topics like health and yeah. grief and loss and death um, come to the fore very often. And it's not just, I mean, there's a lot of like, oh, we tried this new restaurant or, you know, there's some uh -huh. of that kind of yeah. stuff which is yeah. fine. I like to know yeah. the new restaurants. Um, I like to eat, but um, I'm, I'm grateful for learning how to pay attention yeah. in those conversations in a way that I don't know if I would have, if I was just doing my Chicago life. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I am very grateful. So what, what would you say to somebody who might be facing a move and they might have their arms folded <laughs> or they might be freaking out or they might not even know where they're exactly going, yes. but they can tell that somebody has started um, digging up those roots, yeah. whether they want to go or not. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess the main first thing I'd say is pray, you know, mm -hmm. that was so fundamental for me. Um, can you be specific, more specific yes. about like in what ways yes. did you find that prayer got your heart kind of yeah. on the pilgrimage road? So um, prayer for me is really about being honest with God and honest with myself. And so when I started seeing those things, when I was saying I can't and I won't, you know, mm -hmm. instead of shaming myself or trying to bury that, taking that to God and saying, all right, let's talk about this, mm -hmm. you know? Um, what's going on in my heart? Why is this there? What would you like to do in my heart through this? You know, that was a huge part of it. Um, and then another part of it was the actual letting go. Um, I think somebody suggested to me, I go back to places and say goodbye as oh, I was leaving. I love that. And I know it was so great. So I turned that into like prayer walking. So mm -hmm. I would walk around the college campus and stand in front of buildings and remember conversations and say, thank you, Lord, for that part of my life that was so good and so challenging. I started walking around my house. You know, I was packing for about three months and I would stand in a room and I would remember the hard things that happened in that room, the good things that happened in that room, the people that were in and out. And I would say, thank you, Lord, for all of it. This has been a gift. And I really did that for a couple of months and um, I needed to say goodbye to that house. It had become a friend and sheltered us mm -hmm. from all kinds of things. And what was so great about that was when I left town, uh, I just had this sense that I had given God back that gift he had given me. Mm -hmm. And he was literally pulling me in a hovercraft to something else. Mm -hmm. And I was sad. I was crying, but um, it just felt like God's presence was in all of this. And, you know, too, as I've been praying so much about this, I see God at work, you know, mm -hmm. I, um, I don't take for granted that the storage unit we found was five minutes from the house we ended up buying. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't take for granted that we found a furnished rented apartment that they let us rent month by month, you know. I really think God went before us. He opened doors. He provided for us. And um, that's what prayer does. I think it, it gets to the core of who you are and helps you open your hands to God. It also um, opens your eyes to see God at work. Mm -hmm. It really is in big ways and little ways. Yeah. I, I think another thing that was helpful for me during this transition, because we too had taken several years to try to figure yeah. out look, where are we going, um, was that I understood from previous moves in my case, 
that it was going to take a couple of years yes. to really like walk into the grocery store and know where the tortillas are or um, yes. figure out doctors. In my case, I needed to figure that out sooner than later. And a lot of us who are older do. Um, and I just understood that this was going to take time yes. and that transition is another word for grief. Yes. That yes. If you, if you recognize that some of the stuff that gets stirred up is, is grief. Yes. It's, it doesn't make it easier. You have to go through it. You, anyway. mm -hmm. you, do. <laughs> you, you, have you to can try it. and pretend that it's not there, but it, it's not how it, it works no. best no. for us to grow in wisdom. So recognizing that, you know, like I had a lot of days, especially during the pandemic when I was like, man, I would just love to go sit and have a cup of coffee yeah. with my pal that I used to meet at Starbucks in Palatine. And we would just talk and we would talk about theology and talk about our yeah. kids and, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of life-giving conversations um, they mm -hmm. don't happen instantly. You know, no. you, you moved into a place where you had some foundation, you know, there, some familiarity. Um, and so that's helpful. You had purposed, um, to connect with this church community. Um, and all of that helps. Now, sometimes you can move to a place and, you, you know, yes. it doesn't always work that way. It no. has it for us, you know, and we're, now kind of working through hanging out at a church and trying to make sense of whether it's the place for us. And that, you know, that's, it's weary. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, it is. But that's, but all of that, that learning um, and recognizing that you just might feel tired. Yeah. It's not just an introvert thing or an extrovert thing. Yeah. It just takes a lot of energy it does. to be the new kid. Yes, so. it does. Um, we happen to live in a place where there's a lot of new kids for whatever reason. We didn't mm. know that. And so they have adopted this philosophy of, hey, I was new once. So mm -hmm. I'm going to remember what that feels like. And um, that's just so helpful. It, it is. We, when we moved to Wisconsin, one of the things that we found was that no one moves. Yes. And <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> and everybody just stays put and they, you know, they've got generations yeah. of like, we go to fish fry on Friday night with the right. family. Right. That's amazing. Unless you're the new person. Yeah. And, and I had conversations with others who'd moved into the area and it's interesting. None of us are there, are still yeah. there. It just, it was a hard place to transplant. Yeah. You know, rocky ground. And because yeah. I think in part, um, that cultural, you know, like our kids marry the kids that they went to kindergarten, <laughs> you know, the other kids they went to kindergarten with, <laughs> and, you know, and we all stay and that's mm -hmm. like, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But if, if you move into a place like that, it's going to be a different experience in a different timeline yes. um, than moving like where we live. People are coming and going all the time, you know, yeah. vacationers yes. and snowbirds and, yeah. um, you know, and just because of our ages. So remembering what it's like to be new. Yes. You never get to be in a click at church again, or if yeah. you you yeah. just don't you you don't if you've learned the lesson you don't yeah and I think that's part of the good part about moving and shaking up your life when you're older especially if you've been like we were in the same place for 40 years is you remember that feeling of oh I'm the new kid here um and you've forgotten that you know so you, yeah. you forget that you can walk into a church and there's somebody there that's the new kid and um it's right. it's good in a lot of ways it, yeah it is good in a lot of ways. Well, for those that are watching, um, I, I again want to commend Afton's beautiful books. They're both available on Amazon to you. And 
Um, if you're seeing this because you're watching on YouTube, check out our website, thesageforum.com, um, where we feature lots of voices and insight from um, women that are seeking to grow in wisdom and maturity. Um, and we have a newsletter too. So I'm going to call this the commercial, um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm really grateful to be able to spend some time with somebody. My last question to you, Afton, do you still have the moving boxes in your garage or are they gone? <laughs> Um, um, the short answer is they are gone. Um, I married a very organized individual and um, he loves to have things off the floor and off the garage. So our cars are in the garage, the boxes are gone. And, you know, that was part of the whole process too, is realizing, um, you know, we both need different things in a move and he needed order. And um, so, yeah, no, we don't have any boxes. <laughs> but it's, well, that's what we had um, been renting for several years because we lost a home in um, the economic downturn in yes. 2012 is when we lost our home. And so I was just used to always keeping moving boxes on hand because you never know when you might have to move. And when we moved here, I said, I'm going to throw them away. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. It felt like, or give, you know, give yeah. them away, except nobody needed them. So they went to the yeah. recycle, but. Um, yeah, it, it's a good feeling. Toss out the boxes and dig in. We're and, here. Yeah. We're here. It's a way of saying we're here. And yes. if you have to keep the moving boxes handy, that's okay too. Moving is hard. We are with you. And if you're watching and you've got a story to share or a tip to share, send it along. But for now, thank you so much for hanging out this morning. After. Oh, thank you, Michelle. It's always great to talk to you. All right. Thank you.